Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Nano 11 24H2. We actually took a look at Nano 11 back in July of 2023, however that was version 22H2. Many of you have been asking me, can we take another look at Nano 11 now that it's in its 24H2 release? And of course the answer is yes. So I'm very eager to see what has changed from Nano 11 22H2 to Nano 11 24H2, and just overall see the improvement that has been made to this custom Windows ISO over the last year and a half. Um, if you don't know, Nano 11's goal is to, similar to what Tiny 11 is, is to shrink the install size and the required resources for Windows 11 to function. So as we can see, just like every other 24H2 build, we can see that we have the new setup screen, which I actually do prefer a whole lot more over what we used to see. Uh, next, continue, uh, hopefully, there we go, finds our 60 gig disk. Next, and that should be it. That was very simple. All right, and here we are. So we are now in the Windows 11 out-of-box experience. Nothing too out of the ordinary compared to what we would typically see with Windows 11 24H2. It's all been pretty standard. This is the one part of Windows 11 24H2 I really hate, is that if it detects any updates, it will take forever to update. This happened in my Tiny 11 video I did last week. I ended up having to remove the network card and rebooting because it just took way too long. Um, hopefully that is not going to be the case now, even though it appears like it might just be that way. All right, so after the reboot, it's now asking us to enter a name, contrasting to what Windows 11 typically does, where it asks you to log in with a Microsoft account. So I'm glad that was removed. We have all of our privacy settings here that I'm just going to go ahead and accept all of them because it's just a VM. And hopefully it does not decide to do an update. I'm going to be very mad if it does. Uh, that is one thing, like I said, that I strongly dislike about this new build of Windows 11, is that if it finds an update, it will make you do an update, even if your edition is Windows 11 Pro. It's because if you're using Windows 11 Pro, I feel like you should be exempt from that, because you're probably going to have some sort of enterprise-level deployment that's going to update it for you. And this is exactly what I was talking about, and you can't even skip this. So the solution is to disconnect the network adapter and reset the VM. I mean, you'll have to go through OOB again, but it's much more, it's quicker than having to sit through that terrible screen. And also, don't keep in mind that that downloading process will also impact the quote Nano 11 because it's downloading more things. And I'm sure with that comes the Windows update cache files and the windows.old, depending on what update it is. So yeah, it that will really actually impact Nano 11. So we're just going to completely bypass that because that is very disappointing. All right, and we are back. I just installed VMware Tools just to take a little bit more time out of the video. But here we are, first impressions of Nano 11 24H2. The first thing we're going to do is open this post setup folder just in case there's anything that we have to do. Um, so we have a few folders we'll go through. We have the .git um, as well as the .github. I, these literally just, they're probably the build files for the actual um, tweaker. Then we have the install software, which is a bunch of batch files where we can install various software. So if we wanted the Google Chrome, uh, we saw this in one of our previous videos with a different ISO. It just used Winget to install Google Chrome. Uh, and I'm assuming it uses Winget to install all of these. So that's pretty cool. Moving back into the root directory, we have OS tweaks such as Disable settings homepage, get rid of edge, verbose login, web search, Windows 11 context menu, and Windows Spotlight. We then have useful stuff, which I will give you a hint, isn't very useful. Um, the, the developer's YouTube channel, their GitHub, their Discord, and their extras. Um, and then we have nano win OEM information that I'm assuming will just set the registry, yep, the current version OEM info uh, with a link to their Discord. Uh, we then have a readme that I don't even know if I can open in Notepad. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, projects used in the original post setup, notes. Most of it was made by XPower7125, and the updater made by BunnyRabbit12. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, updated Windows update settings. So I'm assuming these aren't ran by default um, because you actually might have to set them. Um, and this will actually pause Windows updates, which is pretty cool. Um, something that we should probably do, especially because, like I said, updates will break uh, custom builds like this. And the updater will... I don't know. Is this? Oh, this might update Nano 11. 
I don't actually know what this does. Probably updates Nano 11 with, uh, you know, actually approved by Nano 11 updates. So they test them and vet them before Microsoft breaks it themselves. Pretty cool. So here we are. Let's take a look here at the desktop. I really do like this wallpaper, although I do believe it does look, it's not like the Windows Server background. It kind of looks like something we'd find in Windows 11 24H2 IoT. Um, but I do like it. it does have that kind of shadow effect along the edges. Um, it's in dark theme automatically. The entire OS is in dark theme, by the way, if you haven't taken a look yet. Um, pretty cool. One thing I like compared to Tiny 11, or maybe it's one thing that I do like is it keeps the new Windows 11 context menus. Um, I know some ISOs like to get rid of those and revert them back to the way they were in Windows 10, but I personally like this UI. Um, and again, we're seeing this 24 h 2 features like the descriptions under the buttons um, for cut, copy, rename, and delete. In the bottom right corner, we have our system tray, including the show desktop button that I keep forgetting is no longer enabled by default. We have our time, or notifications rather, our volume, as well as again, another 24H2 feature, the ability to switch between them. Um, and then our system tray with VMware tools, which I installed. Windows security, I do like to see that installed. Safely remove hardware and Bluetooth. By default, pinned to the taskbar, we of course have our start menu. We have our search bar, but it's a miniature, it's like the pill size search bar, not the full length bar. We have our task view, we have file explorer, and we have the Microsoft Store, which the Microsoft Store is not going to load because I never reattach the NIC to this computer. Opening start menu, we can see that we only have two things pinned. We have settings and file explorer um, in all apps. Again, very minimal because the, the whole goal of this is to reduce the amount of bloat that comes with Windows. So we have accessibility features. We have calculator, we have system, we have file explorer, we have get help and get started, which apparently are really hard to remove from the OS. Media player, Microsoft Store, notepad, paint, photos, system, settings rather, snipping tool, terminal, backup, security, and tools. But one thing I'm not seeing is Microsoft Edge. Um, so you probably would have to use one of these software installers to actually get a web browser which at least they include a web or at least they include an installer because I've been in my original versions of tiny 11 like way back two three years ago they didn't have any of that so you had to bring it over either over an FTP server or a USB drive in the search we can see maybe it's just because I'm not connected to the internet but we can see that we don't have any sort of bloat in here it's just what Windows search should look like no you know advertisements no any of that uh, Microsoft should really take notes here in the file explorer we can see that they've reverted back to kind of like the classic spacing between items on the left side um, we're really missing that padding between them which I don't actually like I like having the padding there I think it looks better but to each their own um, we can see that this does keep the newer style of file explorer so it doesn't revert back to the way it was in 21 h2 and as for disk space, we're using 51.3 of 59.2. So we're using roughly eight gigabytes of space, which is much better than what we saw with Tiny 11 24H2 last week. That one really surprised me with how much space they were using. So let's now take a look at Task Manager and let's see what's actually running on this OS. So I gave this VM two gigs of RAM and a two core processor. So we're using you know typical Windows utilization, anywhere from two to 10%. Um, on idle idling you see how it just bounces up and down Windows does that a lot uh, memory we're using 1.3 out of 2 gigabytes so not that bad we're actually doing pretty good um, 1.2 now so not bad for Windows 11 um, like I said let's go into settings here go to system and about just to show that this is Windows 11 Pro 24 h2 comes with build 26 100.683.863 uh, not bad at all um, and is Windows actually activated no I don't think it is no Windows is not activated I just wanted to make sure um, and it does look like Windows update before I turned off the NIC was running so that is not disabled by default but again it's something you can do with the registry key right here so that being said this is a brief overview of Nano 11 24H2 definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below about this has it actually become better than Tiny 11 because I'm starting to think that um, it takes up a lot less space than what we saw last week. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.